This full moon is super bold, it is super fiery, it is super spicy and feisty. It is coming in with all of the heightened energy, all of the heightened vibes, okay? You do not want to miss this video, especially the beginning part where I talk about what this means for everybody, no matter what sign you are. Let's get into it. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. My name is Tawny Michelle. If you are new here, I'm an astrologer and a coach, and I really help you to have breakthroughs in your life, to really turn your pain into power, to utilize your gifts and your multidimensionality to live a more pleasurable life. And I do just a lot of other things. I can't explain everything I do in like one sentence, okay? So make sure that you follow me on socials because I offer a lot of really powerful transformational content, free stuff, etc. over on my social medias. You're missing out if you do not follow me there, okay? I also still do astrology readings. And so if you would like a live reading with me, you can get that. And I also offer a shorter audio reading now. Um, for a more affordable price if you just want a breakthrough in one area of your life if you just have one question that you're desiring to know definitely check out my readings below and with all that out of the way darling let's get into this Aries full moon this full moon is cray cray okay so we need to talk about it so as always starting out with what the fuck is a full moon a full moon is when the Sun and the moon are in opposite ends of the sky they're opposite of each other from Earth's perspective so the moon is lit up with the light of the sun. The moon is reflecting the sun's light, therefore it is full in the sky. We can see the moon at its full capacity. It's very round and very bright, and it lights up the night sky, revealing to us what we couldn't normally see. So a full moon is about bringing things to light. It is about revelations. It is about things being revealed, things coming out from the shadows that we were not aware of before. It is also a culmination because it is a cycle that is getting to a point of culmination from the new moon that we had two weeks ago. So a full moon is a culmination point, a culmination of lessons being shown, lessons being learned, seeds that were planted weeks ago that are now coming to fruition. It's like we are seeing and being faced with something, right? That is what a full moon deals with. It also brings up heightened emotions, intensity, heightened intuition, and it can sometimes cause us to have some trouble sleeping. Uh, we also may feel a little bit more easily triggered, a little bit more easily emotional. Our emotions may be a little bit all over the place or our moods may be a little bit all over the place. There can be kind of an edgy or tense energy during full moons, but especially with this full moon, because it is in the sign of Aries, which is ruled by Mars. <laughs> Aries can deal with conflict, and because it's ruled by Mars, the planet of conflict and masculinity, right? So Aries as a sign is the first sign in the zodiac and it is a fire cardinal sign, a cardinal fire sign. So we have a sign that deals with beginnings and direction and, and moving forward, this massive momentum of energy coming and moving forward with that fire element that also deals with movement and the spirit and passion, but sometimes can deal with anger and rage and tension, right? So Aries as a sign really is about moving forward, being ourselves, moving forward in authenticity, being direct, being independent. It is a very independent sign. Um, you know, the shadow qualities can be kind of like inconsiderate because Aries energy just moves. That's just how it's built. It's not considering everybody else and what they want and what they think. It's just like, I'm doing me. If that triggers you, that's on you, right? It's not thinking about everybody else and how everybody else sees you know, us and yada, 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 right? Like Aries energy is like, just get out of my way. This is where I'm going. This is where I'm doing. It's just, that's just how it's built as a archetype, right? So with this Aries energy, with this full moon in Aries, we can really see a lot coming up with this, a lot coming up to do with independence, sovereignty, right? To do with like pioneering, taking the lead, leadership, confidence. All of these are very big Aries types of qualities and themes that we see coming up a lot of the time when we have Aries transits and Aries placements. Now, because of that though, right? Like when you are a leader, there are, there can sometimes be conflicts. When you are pioneering, when you are trailblazing, when you are going in a way that is good for you, not everybody is going to like that. And that's why Aries can deal with conflict and we can get caught up in trying to compete with others or prove ourselves. Aries is a very self-focused sign. Therefore, this full moon is showing us something to do with where we need to come back to self where we need to focus on ourselves, where we need to live in the moment more, where that spark within us needs to be ignited, 
right? Where we've been maybe holding back out of a fear of conflict or maybe where we've been not facing certain challenges out of fear. This is gonna be very, very big, like where we haven't been too strong or stable in our sense of self, where we haven't went after or taken action on the things that we actually desire, like where our spark has been put out by what other people may think. Like this is going to be very, very huge for this full moon in Aries because this full moon deals a lot with the axis of Aries and Libra. So Aries is very self-focused, like I just you know, said, all of the things I just said is very Aries. The opposite of Aries is Libra, right? That is very much focused on others, very much focused on the perception of others and doing what other people think you should and being more considerate and understanding yourself through other people and relationships and connections and dynamics with others and connecting socially with others, etc. right? So Libra is very opposite of Aries in that regard, whereas Aries is very self-focused. I do what I want. If you don't like it, like that's on you, you know, kiss my ass kind of energy. Libra is very much like, well, what do you want to do? And what would you like? And let me consider you first before I make a decision, right? And so these two polarities are really, really coming to the surface with this full moon in Aries happening on Friday. So what I really think this is gonna be about, because Mars, the ruler of Aries, is actually in Libra, its opposite sign right now, and coming up on the south node. So there is like a decreasing in maybe a past identity, or there is a, a past identity coming up to the surface, or a karmic situation involving a relationship, or involving other people, the opinions of other people, some kind of old dynamic, some kind of old, you know, contract or some kind of old commitment that is really coming up to be faced and dealt with, right? So one of the biggest things that I really think that we could see with this full moon is making big decisions, making big decisions, facing big truths that are maybe uncomfortable, unsettling, or challenging for us, right? So another big thing I really think that we could see is this quote that I love, right? And it's perfect for this full moon, perfect for Aries and Libra energy. And the quote basically goes that when you avoid conflict externally, you create it internally. And that is so, 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 so potent and, and relevant to this full moon. When we avoid conflict externally with our relationships, with our connections in our lives, or because we're, we're worried about what other people are going to think, you know, we actually create conflict internally. And so this full moon could be highlighting an internal conflict that has been created because we are avoiding it externally, right? Like we're, we're trying to tiptoe around other people's opinions or feelings or thoughts or whatever right? Like we're avoid making a decision because of what other people might think. Like we are being a little bit too considerate or too collaborative rather than doing what feels aligned and right for us, doing what lights us up, right? So this is about coming back to peace within, facing challenge, you know, that we've been maybe avoiding so we can find that peace within, this is also about, you know, being more direct, being more honest, being more truthful um, with people in our lives, you know, and be seeing where we've been making decisions that don't align with who we are, right? Another huge thing that this could really be about is authenticity and truth within relationships. Maybe we've been holding back parts of ourselves and, and who we really are, or what we really want, or holding back on making certain decisions because of certain relationships in our lives. Maybe we've been caught in certain relationship dynamics that we know are not what we want, right? So it's like, we have to take the lead, we have to make a stand, we have to reveal what's going on with us internally for something to change, or we have to face some kind of emotional challenge that feels very maybe karmic, right? That, that we notice like a pattern with for us to move forward, for us to really create lasting change in our lives and feel more aligned in our lives. So this could also be a process of like really shedding old identities or shedding past versions of who we are, you know, with Mars uh, conjunct the South Node, right? Like really kind of letting go of old parts of ourselves, old versions of ourselves, old ways of doing things that are no longer aligned and really facing certain fears that we've been putting off with these, you know, 
parts of ourselves or these relationships. Um, the other thing is really letting go of how others are going to perceive us and no longer taking responsibility for other people's opinions of us. Like that is so huge. Like you are only responsible for your opinion of you, right? Like you cannot be responsible for someone else's perception of you. You just can't. No matter how hard you try to change their perception of you, right? Like it, it doesn't matter. Like you are not responsible for how someone else sees you. Like that is not your responsibility, right? We are only responsible for how we see other people and, and our thoughts and our feelings and all of that, but we cannot control how other people see us. So we also may be letting go of old perspectives, old perceptions, you know, that no longer align with us. And we also may be really seeing kind of the art of relationships, right? So for some, this could be that you are breaking off or breaking up with or letting go of certain relationships in your lives. For others, this could be that you are finding challenging but artful ways of really coming back together with certain relationships, right? So you are finding ways to solve certain things, like you are facing challenges and dealing with the things that you have not desired in this connection or in this relationship, but you are also willing to go the extra mile, make the change and, you know, lead yourself through it, right? So. This could also be, you know, really kind of making changes to the relationships rather than just breaking free of them or just breaking off with them, right? Um, so <clears throat> I think that this is a time where we're really gonna see where we've been avoiding conflict, like I said, where we're gonna see that, you know, we've been blaming our circumstances or blaming other people or blaming, you know, whatever situation on why we're waiting or why we're on the fence about something but really we're waiting on ourselves, right? Because Aries energy is very much about stepping into your sovereignty, stepping into your confidence, stepping into that you know inner force within you, that inner fire within you. And if we're constantly on the fence and in this like maybe wishy-washy flaky energy and we're not actually deciding and being direct on the things that we want and taking action on the things that we want, we're not going to feel confident in ourselves, right? We're just not. So if you think that you're waiting on all these other people or waiting on all these other situations, you're not, you're waiting on yourself. This is a time of coming back to yourself, coming back to your own sense of sovereignty, right? Embracing your independence, embracing who you are, embracing being bold and taking bold action and doing the brave thing, right? So um, the other big thing with this is we don't need to require validation as well for us to do what we wanna do, right? So another big thing we could see coming up with this full moon is like, where are we requiring validation from external sources to just be ourselves or to make a decision that we wanna make or to do the things that we wanna do, right? Like where are we taking advice from people that actually do not understand or actually are not great role models for where we want to be or have not done the thing that we are taking advice from? right? Or that we're getting advice for, right? Like where have we been just kind of like outsourcing our power to other people, right? That's what this Aries full moon is really going to bring up, right? And so these are a lot of the things that we can notice with this full moon. Now, what's also really interesting about this full moon is that Venus is coming into her final square with Uranus, which is also bringing in this massive theme of relationships and what's good for us within a relationship, how we are loving ourselves and creating the abundance and the authenticity and the joy and the pleasure within our relationships. And if we are doing that, like if the relationships that we are in are reflecting our own self-love, right? Are we being authentic? Are we being truly ourselves? Are we being, are we not afraid to take risk and, and be more bold within our relationships with other people? Or do we have a lot of relationships in our lives that are stale or that we can't be our true authentic selves in? Or the relationships that we have, do they really actually reflect love for ourselves and value for ourselves? And what I mean by that is some, would someone who loves themselves have the relationships that you have in your life? Do you have relationships in your life that are disrespectful to you 
are you know, not what you actually desire, where you're settling, right, for something that you don't actually want to keep the peace, right? Like these types of relationships are not a reflection of self-love. They're a reflection of insecurity. And we've maybe been getting these lessons on and off for the last few months now. And that's why this Aries full moon is such a massive culmination of lessons that we've been learning for several months or even several years because there's so much completing around this full moon. So we need to take a very honest look at our lives. And you know, this Aries full moon may also be about taking risk to change things up to something that we desire more, something that we enjoy more, something that feels more authentic, more aligned to our hearts, to our souls, something that lights us up more, right? So the other big thing about this full moon is that Mars is coming up on the south node, like I said, which is really kind of draining us of a lot of conflict, a lot of places where we've been avoiding conflict, it's really bringing up a lot of past karmic patterns and cycles to do with conflict, to do with identity, to do with other people and relationships. So really watch out for that. But it's also coming up on a square with Pluto that will perfect more as we get into next week. And so this is also very much about coming up on and facing a challenge, facing a fear, being more bold you know, facing certain power struggles that maybe we've been avoiding in relationships or in connection with others, where we've kind of, again, been like settling for less than what we want, where we haven't been allowing ourselves to be in our power in a certain situation. So this is really, really huge too. Okay, and this, this Aries full moon is really bringing in a lot of downloads, a lot of big mindset shifts and changes, a lot of risk, a lot of boldness, a lot of, you know, taking aligned action, taking new actions, a lot of revelations, you know, a lot of lessons learned, a lot of really realizing like what needs to change moving forward, right? So I would love to know down below um, if you are still here, number one, comment the word badass. If you're still here, I appreciate you so freaking much. But I would love to know down below <clears throat> if you are noticing any of these themes as of now, right? If you've been noticing anything that I just talked about as of now, at the time that you're watching this, what they are, tell me a little bit about your situation. I want to know. I would love to hear about it. And um, we are going to get ready to move on to the rising signs. If you would like more help with anything that you're navigating in your life right now, again, feel free to book a reading with me. We can do a one-on-one -on -one live reading that lasts an hour, or you can get a recorded audio reading right now and uh, on my website. So definitely see the description down below to book those. I love you guys. Thank you so, so much for watching, and we're gonna move into the rising signs. Alrighty, Aries risings. This full moon is happening in your first house. If you did not watch the beginning of this video, you definitely need to go watch that. It's all about you, and you're likely gonna relate to it, so definitely go do that, because you'll, you'll probably relate to it more than anyone, since you're an Aries rising. But this full moon is happening in your first house of self your body, your appearance, your image, your identity, all of the things, your vitality, your health. So those are a lot of the topics that you could be focused on for this full moon. But this is a time where you are really getting back to who you are. You're really remembering who you are. You're really coming back to yourself, coming back to a sense of familiarity, coming back to a sense of like, oh, this is who I am. This is what I need to do. This is where I've been unaligned. This is where I've not been feeling like myself. This is what's been going on in my relationships. You know, maybe I've been more focused on my relationships than I have on myself. You know, all of these things could really be coming up right now. This is a time where you're really, really, really seeing the bigger picture for yourself and coming back into a sense of internal alignment with who you are and seeing who you are on a deeper level while also getting rid of old dynamics, old situations, old past karmic stuff to do with relationships right now, right? So you could be making some really big decisions. You could be making some really big moves. 
Um, this could also be somehow eventually affecting like your future, your long-term goals, your career, and the changes that you know whatever happens here, like the change, they the changes kind of ripple into that area of life. You could also really be finding that there are a lot of things happening in terms of you wanting to take a risk or you wanting to create some kind of uh, change or you know new level of excitement within the things that you find joy in, the things that you find pleasure in, the things that you that really light you up, that are a lot of fun, that give you a sense of passion and creativity and that somehow involve maybe your resources, finances, money, income, um, the things that you own, right? So these are all of the different things that you could really be com seeing come up right now if you're an Aries rising. This is very much about you though and getting back to who you are authentically and making decisions from that place even though they may be a little bit challenging or a little bit risky, but it's like you need to come at it from a direct place. You need to come back to what you need, right? Um, in your, your own sovereignty, in your own authentic truth, right? So let me know down below if you're in Aries Rising, if you're seeing any of this come up. I'd really love to hear your feedback as always. And we are gonna move on to Taurus Rising. So. If you're a Taurus rising, this full moon is happening in your 12th house. So this is kind of your behind the scenes life, right? So this full moon could really definitely be affecting you like subconsciously and really getting back to like a sense of what you need in terms of like like subconscious needs, subconscious behaviors, your sleep patterns, like what's going on behind the scenes, like your your habits, your health, you know, all of that and really getting clear and aligned in these places so you can feel more of a, a spark and more of that fire again within you. So this could be a time where you're kind of removing yourself from like your normal ways of doing things in your life. You're kind of like doing more behind the scenes or you're kind of like removed from society a little bit more in some way. You could be needing a lot more rest. Um, this could also be revealing like an old cycle or an old pattern or something that it's time for you to really face or take action on so you can like end something, right? That's another big theme if you're a Taurus rising with this full moon. Could be a time of ending things. It could be a time of, um, you know, realigning with subconscious things that you had maybe forgotten about, lost, or had kind of been running from or avoiding for a long time. Uh, especially to do with your sense of masculinity, your sense of leadership, your sense of sovereignty, your sense of like taking action. Um, this could also be showing you where you've been maybe avoiding conflict around something that you actually want and desire, um, where you've been avoiding conflict in your life, in your relationships, in your work, in your day-to-day -day routines with employees with you know people that you work with etc so something like that could be really coming up as well um and with venus squaring uranus in your sign you know for the third time you're also really seeing where you're kind of becoming ready to maybe do something different or make some really big changes in terms of your home family life and um, maybe your your relationships in that area of life it's like you're you're ready to take some risk or make some big changes that you've been maybe working on or thinking about for a few months now so let me know down below if you're a taurus rising how that's playing out for you and if you're noticing these things come up in your life and if you missed the beginning of this where i talked about this full moon in depth and what it meant for everybody including you go watch that part because i went way more in depth you don't want to miss it those themes are going to be prevalent in everybody's life so anyways Moving on to Gemini Rising. So for Gemini Risings, this full moon is happening in your 11th house. So this is a time where you are really seeing the bigger picture in terms of, you know, what you want to do in the world, your sense of community, your sense of 
um, connecting with others, networking, marketing, you know, going to big events and, and, you know, being in different crowds, being in different cliques of people, having new and different kinds of acquaintances and groups that you're involved with, right? So this full moon could really be bringing up those topics. It's also really showing you where you maybe have been avoiding being more of a leader, putting yourself out there more in front of other people because maybe you've been avoiding some kind of conflict or challenge, right? Um, you've been maybe kind of hiding the things that you're really passionate about or the things that you're very artful about um, in some way. And so this is a time where you're really being um, shown the spotlight and how you can really step into that sense of like leadership and sovereignty within you. So this full moon for you is definitely a little different than some of the other signs because of where it's happening for you. Um, so that is basically what I'm seeing for you. If you're a Gemini rising, let me know how down below how it's going though. I would really love to hear your feedback and know what you guys are seeing, what's happening, etc. So and also, if you didn't watch the beginning of the video where I talked more in depth about this full moon and all the things that you can notice, go back and watch that because you're missing out, if not. Um, okay, Cancer Risings. This full moon for you is happening in your 10th house, boo. So it is really shining a spotlight on your career path, your long-term goals, where you're going in the future, what you want for your future, what you want out of life, what you're building towards, what you're headed towards, your direction, right? So this full moon could really be revealing something about these areas of life or about these things in your life. You could be getting very clear on the direction now and coming back to a sense of feeling more aligned in that direction. You could be seeing where maybe you've been avoiding conflict with your family or with your career or public life by kind of playing it small or not really embracing who you are or who you are authentically or not embracing your truth in some way, not being in your sovereignty in some way. So this could also be the case for some of you as well. You may also notice over like the next week or so um, that there are some things that you're also facing in terms of your home family and your relationship life. Um, there could be some like fears, some challenges that you're really needing to face as things may get a little bit intense in terms of your personal life versus your, your social life or your relationship life. Um, and so some of that could be coming up over the next week as you really learn how to get more in your power in these areas of life and face these fears, face these changes. Um, that you're dealing with or that you're going through. So let me know down below, Cancer, if that's resonating, if you're noticing any of these things coming up so far, I'd really love to hear your feedback. And um, also, if you didn't catch the beginning of this video, you're missing out, so definitely go watch that. And then also, if you would like to book a reading or get more from me, definitely see the description down below. And we are gonna move on to my fellow Leo Risings. So for Leo Risings, this full moon is happening in our ninth house of higher learning, education, long-term travels, coaching, mentorship, teaching, learning, etc. So this full moon is about getting back to the bigger vision, getting back to our bigger sense of purpose, maybe even what feels like our mission, you know? Um, this full moon is also really bringing up this sense of like speaking truths and, you know, helping others and, you know, being more alive in terms of what we feel our greater sense of purpose and, and meaning is in life, right? It's really bringing in those elements of learning and furthering um, our education, furthering our skill sets, furthering the things that we actually are interested in, right? And taking them a step farther. So we're really kind of getting realigned with our direction. We're also getting really realigned with our sense of independence and our sense of sovereignty, where we need to break free of old routines, old dynamics, old environments, old situations, 
that are no longer serving us at our highest level, that are no longer feeling authentic to us, right? We're really gonna be seeing where we've maybe avoided certain situations or avoided conflict and not really actually speaking our truth. And so this is gonna be a massive time for Leo Risings where you're really noticing that you're speaking your truth a lot more, you're putting more of your ideas out there, you're really putting a lot of you know your energy out there and you have more of like a, a long-term attainable goal that you want to achieve with this as well, right? To maybe do with, you know, teaching and learning or mentorship or education or, or travel or something, right? So that's going to be really big for this full moon for Leo Risings. The other big thing is that we're really being pushed to step into our authenticity in terms of our career and um, maybe make some changes or take some risk in terms of our career with Venus squaring Uranus in our 10th. And then we're also gonna have Mars coming up on its square to Pluto over this next week. Um, and that's happening in our third and sixth house. So this is gonna be facing some fears and making some potential big changes in terms of our environment, our day-to-day, lives, our routines, our work schedules, our work in general that we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis and potentially our health. So we're really making some big changes here or being pushed to make some big changes here and really own our power and be more responsible here. So let me know down below if you're Leo rising, if this resonated, if you're seeing any of this happen yet, I would really love to hear your feedback and what you're noticing. If you missed the beginning of this video, go back and watch it because you're not gonna wanna miss out on that. And then also, if you would like help through whatever area of life you're dealing with right now or whatever situation you're going through right now, I do readings, so see the description below. So moving on to Virgo risings. So for Virgo risings, this full moon is happening in your eighth house. So this is a time where you are really seeing what you need in terms of your financial independence. This is a time of you really seeing where you've been holding yourself back to maybe keep the peace or where you've been settling in situations that haven't been right for you, where you've been kind of on the fence financially or with resource kinds of decisions or um, old commitments. You know, this could be a time where you are finally cutting things out that are no longer good for you, whether it's financially or whether it's like a, a situation involving like your own sense of sovereignty, your own sense of power, right? Like this is a time where I really feel like Virgo risings are really like purging something or letting something go, cutting something out um, that's no longer good for you right? And a lot of you may notice this financially, whether it's a financial commitment or obligation that you've been, that you need to take the lead on, that you need to take charge with, that you need to stand up for yourself with, whatever it is, it's like you're, you're cutting something out, like you're, you're seeing the bigger vision here, you're seeing the bigger picture, you are feeling a lot more intuitive, a lot more is being revealed to you about something at this time. So really pay attention to what you're kind of seeing here with this. Now, the other thing that we have really going on is that, you know, Mars is on the south node or coming up on the south node as well at the time of this full moon. So it's like there is something here that you have been dealing with or putting up with to keep the peace financially or with something that you have, something that you own, like ownership of something or, you know, your resources, your values, but it's like, this is finally being dissolved. This is finally being unraveled. This is finally like, I can't keep trying to keep the peace here anymore. I can't keep like smiling and acting like this is okay anymore when it's not, when I don't want this, when I don't like this, like I'm not gonna keep putting my effort into trying to keep the peace or trying to balance this out anymore, right? So it's like, you're definitely, it definitely feels like you're letting go of something, like you're purging something, like you're unraveling something, like you're cutting something out, cutting something off. Um, 
yeah so big energy coming in for you if you're a virgo rising let me know down below if any of that resonated and also make sure you go back and watch the beginning if you haven't already because you're missing out on a lot and if you need any help navigating any situations you're dealing with right now make sure to book a reading with me down below so moving on to libra risings so for libra risings this full moon is happening in your seventh house of relationships <laughs> so this full moon really deals with relationships for you and what e either you or your partner need to embrace more of in a relationship like maybe your partner is taking more of the lead or realizes they need to take more of the lead or do more for themselves at this time or maybe you realize that about yourself right either way it's like something is being shown to you something's being reflected back to you to do with other people in your life and to do with you know taking the lead, being more in a leadership role, coming back to yourself, coming back to your authenticity, coming back to your truth, coming back to what you desire, coming back to being more direct or taking a more direct sense of action, right? Um, and it's kind of like, you know, you could also be kind of in the process of really seeing what's no longer aligned with you and who you are or your identity, this could be kind of like dissolving past parts of who you are, dissolving um, certain identities that you no longer resonate with. Um, you could notice some more tension or conflict coming up with other people at this time. So you do wanna just kind of watch out for that. And uh, yeah, other than that, there may be some tension rising um, over the next week between you and you know who you are what you want versus something going on with your home family and personal life some kind of change some kind of fear some kind of challenge or power struggle that you're really needing to face in this area uh, to make some changes right or some tension that you've been feeling that you that you need to face or deal with in this area over the next week so watch out for that too so let me know down below, Libra, what you're noticing with this full moon. I'd really love to hear your feedback and to hear what you guys are noticing coming up. Also, if you didn't watch the beginning of this video, go back and do that because you're missing out on a lot. And if you need any help navigating any situations that you may be going through right now, definitely book a reading with me down below. I have a couple different options. And with that being said, we are going to move on to Scorpio. So for Scorpio risings, this full moon is happening in your sixth house of work, health, day-to-day -day routines, you know, all of those types of things, like the work that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, the task that you're doing, um, all of that. So this full moon could definitely be bringing up those topics for you. You could definitely be seeing where it's time to maybe end something or where something's coming to a culmination, something's coming to like a peak or something's being revealed to you that has maybe felt a little bit hidden up until now to do with your work, to do with maybe coworkers, other employees, to do with your job, to do with your, your health or your diet, you know, like something like this, like certain habits that you have that you're trying to break as well that maybe you've been resisting or avoiding um, because you haven't wanted to face some kind of challenge or conflict or discomfort or tension in a situation. And this full moon's really bringing that to the surface. Like, hey, it's time to face this. It's time to deal with this. Like, you can do it. You know, it, it may cause some conflict or be challenging but you can do it this is a great time to get back into the gym to start exercising again to really you know kind of reset any goals that you have in this area of your life can be very um helpful right now and you can have that extra oomph to like actually do it and start it at this time so there may also be some changes or risk that are happening within your like, you know, what you desire long term for your career, your future, your goals, where you feel like you're going and, and what you want out of your life and future um, and your reputation. 
um, versus your relationships or just other people in general. Like you may be kind of coming into more of an authentic change um, or risky energy in these areas in some way. And um, yeah, that is basically what I'm seeing for you, Scorpio. Let me know down below if any of this resonates, if you're noticing any of these things come up. Also, go watch the beginning of this video where I talked more in depth about this full moon because you will relate to it and you're missing out on a lot if you skipped that part. And um, if you need help navigating any of the situations that you're going through right now, definitely book a reading down below. So. Moving on to Sagittarius rising. So for Sagittarius rising, this full moon is happening in your fifth house of the things that you enjoy. <laughs> the places where you find passion, romance, love, play, joy, children, sexuality, creation, right? All of that. So the full moon happening here is really like revealing something here with these things, really kind of getting you into this like, energy of really facing and dealing with and and, and um, you know maybe spicing things up in this department creating some friction here uh, so you can get moving here in some way like getting you back to what you love and what's authentic to you what actually sparks you right maybe you've been maybe you've gotten lost from that because you've been so focused on what everybody else is gonna think and keeping the peace um, with other people and and worried about how other people may see or perceive the things that you love or the parts of you that you find the most joy in in some way, right? So this is really what this is going to be about for you if you're a Sag rising. Um, so you may also be really considering taking a risk in terms of your education, travel, learning pursuits, and how they may somehow... Uh, you know, deal with like your job, your day-to-day -day routines, your your work, etc. So that could also be something that you're noticing coming up during this time, right? So that is what I'm saying for you if you're a Sag rising. Let me know down below if you're seeing any of these things, Sag. I'd really love to hear your feedback. And if you missed the beginning of this video where I went more in depth about this full moon, you're really going to relate to that as a fellow fire sign. So go back and watch that. And um, yeah, if you need help navigating any situation you're going through right now, book a reading below. So let's move on to Capricorn rising. So for Capricorn risings, this full moon is happening in your fourth house of home, family, your personal life, your kind of like private life, your foundation, right? So this full moon could really be bringing up those topics in your life right now. Your focus could really be on some of these things a little more than usual. It's really revealing where there may be some conflict, tension, or challenges that need to be faced in terms of you, your home life and your family, or it's revealing where you have maybe kept certain parts of yourself private and where you need to get back to some of those parts, some of those things that really make you you, that give you that spark, right? It's kind of like really getting back to you and your private life and really showing you what you need to like embrace or overcome or face here in order to really feel more aligned, right? Like maybe you've been really focused on your career and your external world a lot, you know, and more of your public life and your public image and worrying about how people perceive you here that you've kind of neglected your, your, your true self behind the scenes, right? Um, or you've neglected certain parts of your private life in some way, your family or your home life. And so this full moon's really shining a light here to say, hey, like it's time to like get back to this area of life or there's some kind of ending here or culmination or revelation that's happening with this area of life that's really gonna help you feel more aligned and not worry so much about what other people think of you or whatever, right? So that's really what's happening here for you if you're a Capricorn rising. You could also be really thinking about or desiring to make some kind of investment that may feel a little risky, but that you really desire or that you feel is really gonna add more value to the things that you love in some way. So that could also be something that you're really noticing coming up with this full moon as well. And over the next week, Mars is gonna square Pluto and Pluto's in your first. So this is some tension you could also notice 
with your career, with other people, with balancing out connections, relationships, collaborations, your public image, your reputation, and your career with um, some things going on with you. So you could start feeling some tension to like really make some deep changes um, in some way over the next week with this. So definitely watch out for that as a Capricorn rising. Let me know down below though, Capricorn, if you are noticing any of these things, I would really love to hear your feedback as always. And if you missed the beginning of this video, go back and watch it because you're missing out on a lot. So moving on to Aquarius rising. So for Aquarius risings, this full moon is happening in your third house. And so this is really bringing to light like your environment, your surroundings, the situations you're a part of on a day-to-day -day basis, the people, places, and things that you interact with or talk to or, or are, are around on a day-to-day -day basis, where you need to come out and express yourself, speak your truth, say your opinions more, you know, like where maybe you've been avoiding conflict or avoiding certain environments or avoiding certain topics or s expressing yourself or saying your opinions to avoid conflict. This woman is like, no, embrace who you are, put yourself out there, express yourself. Who cares what the world's gonna think about it, right? Who cares if it's politically correct? Who cares if it sounds, you know, super intelligent enough or, you know, whatever, like, right? Like who cares about all of these other things? It's like, just be you and express yourself. That's really what this full moon I think is about if you're an Aquarius rising. Um, this could also bring up some things that you're facing with neighbors, you know, your local environment or, um, you know, certain events that you're dealing with that are happening around you, cousins, siblings, you know, things like that could also come up around this time or short trips or travels. So um, other than that, that is pretty much it for this uh, full moon for you. If you're an Aquarius rising, let me know down below um, if any of that's coming up for you so far. And if you missed the first part of this video where I went more in depth about this full moon, definitely go back and watch that because it's gonna give you a whole lot more. And um, yeah, thank you Aquarius for watching. I appreciate you. If you would like help navigating any situation you're dealing with, see the description below and book a reading with me. And with that being said, we're gonna move on to Pisces rising. So for Pisces risings, this full moon is happening in your second house of money, income, finances, resources, what you own, and you know what you have right what what you value the things that are worthy to you right you're you're also like your skills at times as well <clears throat> so with this full moon happening here it's really shining a spotlight on these areas of life so you can notice these areas of life coming up more into your focus right and so this could be a time where you are really getting back to what feels aligned in this area of life for you authentically, right? Um, you could be getting back to a sense of independence in your finances in some way, right? Like maybe you are, maybe this full moon is bringing up like the end of a ob financial obligation or, you know, you're finally paying off your debt or you're finally released from an old contract or something like that, you know, something along those lines. So you're really finally kind of seeing like, okay, this is what I want for myself financially, what I want for myself in terms of resources. Like it's about doing what's good for you rather than like trying to be fair, trying to keep the peace with everybody else, considering everybody else in your financial decisions or your investments or whatever, right? So these are some of the things that you could really notice coming up. It's not that you need to be unfair um, or anything like that. Like you may be able to find a solution that works better, but you have to like get back to your needs, right? Instead of focusing on what everybody else wants or what everybody else may think, right? Um, because you will be respected more when you focus on what's right for you and when you see your own sense of worth and value. Right, so that is gonna be really important for you for this full moon as a Pisces rising. So um, other than that, I think that is pretty much it right now. Oh, you may also notice some tension coming up um, in terms of 
your uh, networking, your social life groups of people and investments and finances over the next week. Um, so there may be some changes that start happening there um, as well. So watch out for that over the next week if you're Pisces rising. So that's what I see for you, Pisces. Let me know down below if this resonated and if you missed the first part of this video where I talked all about this full moon in depth for everybody, go back and watch it because you're missing out on a lot. And if you would like to book a reading with me to figure out what the hell is going on in your life right now, see the description below. I have a few different ones to choose from. And with that being said, thank you guys so, so much for watching. That is the end of this video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.